hello everyone thank you so much for tuning in today um i'm going to talk about our paper on diabetic retinopathy detection using convolutional neural networks for mobile use did you know that there are at least 2.2 billion people out there suffering from visual disabilities and at least 1 billion people half of these people could have been avoided if there was an earlier detection technique. One of the main causes of eye complication is diabetes. Diabetes is a pesky monster and it can affect our bodies in many ways, one of which is to increase our blood pressure and this can at the end cause severe eye complications, such as cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, and macular edema. If these are not detected in time, it can cause severe vision loss and even lead to blindness. We can use techniques like deep learning, specifically convolutional neural networks, to uh, identify these diseases and also classify them into their severities and Afterwards, uh, we can use these techniques and apply it to smartphone-based technologies to reach more people and uh, apply for automatic eye disease screening technique, and we can provide more care for many more people in overcrowded regions as well. Here is a um, representation of the a normal retina and diabetic retinopathy patient's retina. We can easily see that there are uh, several differences like hard exodus found in the diabetic retinopathy patients as well as some um, hemorrhages and abnormal growth of blood vessels and aneurysms as well as what we call cotton wool spots. These are the identifiers that we use um, in our uh, convolutional ne neural networks and we are trying to identify these uh, using the CNN technique. And depending on what type of um, form of these exists, we can define the severity um, of the disease, such as class zero, class one, uh, class um, two, and so forth. In this paper, we first uh, try to analyze the efficiency and evaluate the different type of convolutional neural network based uh, classification models and try to evaluate uh, them by their type of uh, data sets, uh, different data sets, three different data sets used in this case. And we also identify them by their protein architectures and we uh, evaluated them by their um, model designs. Here there were five different pre-trained architectures used, EfficientNet V2, B0, EfficientNet B0, MobileNet, MobileNet V2, as well as NASNet Mobile are the protein architectures that we use. And we use three different model designs that are uh, the Model 1, Model 2, and Model FT. And the data sets are the IDRID, Mesador, and Aptos 2019 data set. Here, the methodology was to, uh, in the first approach, to focus on the data first and uh, try to identify the differences between the three data sets and how it influences the outcome of the CNN architecture results in terms of accuracy, loss, and also other um, factors and we tested also three different models on each data set so in total we did nine different model testings in the first approach in the second approach uh, we focused on the architectures the differences of architectures and how this influenced the accuracy and other efficiency factor results and um, we have also tested each architecture uh, with three different models as well, again, with mobile, Model 1, Model 2, and Model FD, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and in total, we tested 15 different models. So in here, we selected one data set, applied five different ar architectures, 
and three different models. In the first one, we selected one um, architecture, which was mobile net and three different data sets. Um, and we try to identify the differences. Here we can see a representation, uh, some examples from the data sets we've chosen. First is the Mesador data sets, which is widely used uh, in the diabetic retinopathy detection, as well as the IDRIT data set. And the third one is the Aptos data set, which is slightly recently released. Um, After the selection of the data sets, we've applied several pre-processing techniques um, to be able to use them for our pre-trained architectures and uh, CNN models, as well as with their additional layers. In the processing technique, we have applied the uh, uh, most common approach is the grayscale uh, after we crop the images uh, into a circular form and then uh, we applied class-limited activation histogram equalization, which in short is CLAY um, in this case, which is widely used as well in convolutional neural networks. Uh, we then resize them by uh, uh, 224 by 224, which is applicable for mobile net in this case, for um, and also efficient net V2P0. Uh, we then applied one hot encoding um to uh, to be able to as well fit the fit the data as the data sets were smaller in size considerably smaller as well in size we applied data augmentation um in in the pre-processing technique after the data augmentation here are some examples of how it might look like um based on their different data sets again as well. So we've used the data augmentation afterwards to feed the uh, models. Uh, after the data augmentation, we take them as input images and we apply uh, them to a pre-trained model. In the first case, uh, it was the mobile net applied to three different data sets um, and then and in the second case, it was uh, this pre-chain model changed it into five different architectures, like we discussed before. And then we applied uh, pooling and flatten layer, as well as uh, two different additional dense layers with 32 output with uh, rectified linear unit activation function, as well as a dropout with 0.5 threshold in this case. And the last layer was defined by the number of classes it included, so it was uh, in short one hot label of of the classes um, with sigmoid activation function as well. So in the model FT fine tuning model, uh, it stayed the same in general. However, before the protein model, we added an additional layer of fine tuning. Uh, uh, before applying the pre-chain, so that's why it's called model FT. Uh, otherwise, it stayed sa same as model one. In model two, uh, which is a slightly bigger model, we've applied uh, again in in the beginning the same technique, but at the end, in the additional layers, uh, in comparison to model one, we have here a wider V-shaped model of um, four different uh, additional dense layers with rectified again linear unit function as well as the same dropout threshold so again this last layer is similar to the model one some significance result that we've achieved from the testing was that uh, we could identify some key efficiency factors and these were the data set size uh, significantly changed the outcomes as well as the data variability in this case how the data set changed in terms of different classes and also the training time uh, was significantly important in order to understand how efficient these models were uh, we can say that um, 
we have provided an increased accuracy for uh, diabetic eye disease detection techniques um, using the same model, but uh, our aim was to actually uh, check the efficiency. Um, but if we were to look at the different efficiency factors, we can say that the most most accurate lightweight model that could be used in further analysis uh, for mobile case uses could be efficient net. Um, however, if we were to look at the, the time, uh, we could say that the fastest uh, model was the mobile net. Let's take a closer look at the results. Here we can see that um, in total in the the first approach we applied nine different models and we can see that on average all, uh, all of them performed 80% um, over 80% accuracy um, and also um, almost um, 0 0.13 um, loss and as well as in some cases as a maximum amount of 0 0.97 uh, sensitivity results as well as 0 0.99 specificity results um, which are significantly higher in the field. Um, we can also see that in terms of different data sets and their accuracy and comparison to their time um, the IDRID and Mesador data sets were slightly smaller and the data set size uh, then after data sets, and we can easily see that here in the mean uh, time difference, as uh, it took a lot much, a lot more time to uh, identify the after data set. It also contributed to more accuracy in this case for aptos as well. If we were to look at different uh, architectures, pre-trained architectures that we've used. So one of them was the efficient net B0 and efficient net V2 B0, which are uh, significantly higher than the than the mobile net and NAS net. <coughs> mobile in this case in accuracy levels, um, and we found that the most accurate was um, efficient net B0. But the fastest one would be the mobile net in this case. If we were to uh, take a closer look at their receiver operator curves, we can see that it, it was um, there was a higher accuracy of uh, detection of class one and class two and class three compared to mobile net. These two cases, C and D, are mobile net, and E is the NAS net mobile in this case. So um, efficient net performed higher. Uh, to identify the classes that are not equal to zero as well. If we were to compare different uh, models, uh, we can see that the first model, here in this case, it's uh, called MobileNet1, um, the, it was highly, there was not, uh, um, significant difference in terms of um, average accuracy results, but we can easily see that it took a lot more time in, to um, train a fine-tuning model, which did not significantly change the results of, of the model. In this case, we can say that MobileNet uh, took the uh, fastest route and also uh, achieved slightly similar results, thus uh, having uh, accuracy over time higher uh, ratio. If we were to look at the same models with, uh, again, receiver operator curves, <clears throat> we can see that model two, again, has the highest one in terms of uh, class zero, as well as the others. Um, in terms of detection. There were, of course, some challenges uh, throughout the uh, application of, of this paper. Uh, 
since we used uh, our own devices, there was a limited memory and processing uh, due to the computer uh, limitation. Uh, thus, it increased uh, the training and testing hours uh, to apply for these uh, models. Uh, and some of the data sets did not represent all the classes, so we could not, um, it was harder to uh, detect those cases as well. And the data set size uh, changed uh, drast drastically in terms of um, different data sets that we've used. If we were to um, use these deep learning techniques and apply them in smartphone-based technologies like screening assistance, uh, we can see that there will be a, a immense reduction in the workload for ophthalmologists. It can highly increase uh, the accuracy of the, the of the diabetic eye disease detection as well as aid ophthalmologists for diagnosis and help screen more patients and also provide uh, screening for rural areas, thus contributing to a pervasive healthcare and eventually prevent blindness. For the future applications, we can apply these technologies in diabetic eye disease um, diagnostic assistance um, combina with combination with other uh, diabetic eye diseases. Uh, if we were to look at it in a reverse perspective, we can also detect diabetes uh, from non-invasive techniques uh, and help them also guide in their, in their diabetes journey. Uh, with combination of other deep learning techniques and other uh, diseases like cardiovascular risks, we can combine these technologies together and make a multi-disease detection systems at the end. Um, so I wish you a healthy for eye for all. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Do you have any questions?